Hey everyone, it's Wayne here with Sparks Family Homestead and uh, welcome to the channel. Hey, it's uh, January 28th. Today is lockdown. Today is day 15 with approximately 52 eggs in my Brinzia incubator and we are very, very excited. So I'm in here in our garage and it is a mess. In fact, see that? See that right there? That's our brooder. So I hope whatever's gonna be able to hatch out, they will all fit in that. If not, then I, we've had some family members, my son and daughter-in-law and the two grandkids, they've moved in uh, for a period of time uh, as, the, as they moved from Was state of Washington to uh, Tennessee here. And they are here with us uh, to settle in, get find work, and um, hopefully down the road here be able to get their own home and so anyway we had we have space here of course at, at our little homestead and so they are here with us and it's awesome so but i'm here in our dirty garage because we've had them move in and a lot of their stuff is here and we're rearranging everything bathrooms inside the house uh re doing all this all these Oh my gosh, it's just so much. Anyway, uh, I am here right now, and it is 8.20 in the morning on January 28th. It is locked down, and so I will be showing you briefly inside the house. Uh, if the grandkids are not up yet, they're, they're a couple, you know, two and three years of age, I will have to sort of whisper like this. <laughs> but I just wanted to let you know, okay? So if it's totally really quiet, I just want to show you the incubator and the eggs and a couple of the processes that I'm doing. I am going to candle the eggs. So that's what I'm up to. And uh, oh, I might as well show you. This is our current system with hatching time cages. There's, uh, I call this like a tier here. There's three sections and I got the uh, the dividing walls so you can take out the walls so the birds can have total freedom to to travel back and forth without being cooped up just in one section and uh, so the top section is totally open the bottom section right here this is the mean hen she from day one ever since she's been born she's been on attack mode I'd like to call her and take her out but doggone it she she lays beautiful eggs and that's what we're doing right now and focusing on eggs. So I took one of the dividing walls and I blocked her off. Doesn't matter where she goes or who she's with, she will try to let them know that she's king king hen and uh, queen hen, whatever you want to call her. And she thinks she's really something. She's strutting her stuff and everything else. And so this one I saved because the male was just picking on her so much and trying to do his thing when there was other hens in, in there. And so I had to, that's the male, and I'll probably call him, uh, or he's destined for freezer camp. Uh, but she's feathering out and she's doing really good. And then I got some pearl down here at this third layer, and they, they're doing really, really well. And then at the very bottom, I've got some jumbo Egyptian quail from our original hatching uh, from my Shire farm back, way back last uh, February. And uh, they hatched first part of March. Anyway, um, they average, they, I mean, they've been great layers. So anyway, they're not even yet a year old and everybody's doing really good when, when you're hearing a uh, high process of eggs and everything. Uh, we're doing quail eggs and they're laying and we're not having an issue with our birds not laying. Okay, I'm inside the house and uh, the kids, the grandkids are still sleeping uh, with mom and dad. And uh, they're behind the wall here where the uh, incubator is at and here I'll show you. This is my setup and uh, this is the Brinzia Ovation EX. And as you can see, I've got the current temp, it's 
humidity is right at 47 46 they say 45 anyway that's that's in the safe zone and if you can see some of the eggs and I will be taking these out in just a, a moment or so and I believe there's approximately 52 eggs in here I don't know how many are fertile or not fertile alive or dead or whatever that's what we're gonna find out okay so this is my setup they've been on our dining room table for the last 15 days and uh, so on the next clip we'll see where we're at with the candling okay lights are off and I'll begin I'm not gonna show you all the all the eggs I'm candling but just enough so we can see the difference between a non fertile and a fertile well who knows I have no idea until right now okay so, so here we go. Oops. I gotta get my glasses so I can see. cannot see through this egg. So I would say that's fertile. This one, it looks like I can see through it. Do you see that? You see how it's sort of, you, there's not, I don't see any life in it. It's not dark. There's, there's nothing in there. So I'm just going to set that one there, okay? That one is not fertile. Let's go here, next one. I think this one is not fertile either. Okay. Whoa, this one's dark. Can you see that? There's no light coming through it at all. So that goes there. This one looks to be Okay, I think this one you can see through. It's hard to tell. Yeah, maybe not. I'm gonna put this one over here to double check that again. Oh, this one definitely you cannot see through. Oh, look at this. You can actually see the air sac at the very top. This one's, this one here is definitely fertile. Tom, so I am going to finish this, and then I'll get back. Okay, I've already gone into two or three minutes here on on showing that. But it's, uh, it's not the easiest thing to see because some of the eggs are so dark on the outside because of the coloring. But anyway, I will double check on some of these eggs, but I'll be back with you as soon as I'm finished candling here. Okay, I just want to show you, I, I, I counted a, about out of the 52 eggs, there, I think it was like 37 that are fertile. They're, they're really dark and I'm going to show you again just real quick so you can really see the difference between a fertile and a non-fertile because some of the non-fertiles were very clear to see through. Okay, uh, so that's what I'm going to do right now. These eggs right down here are the non-fertile. And let me just find a 
when it's really clear. Actually, this one looks to be full. I don't know if you can see, but see how clear that looks? It's pretty, pretty clear. So let me try another one here. Try this one here. Yeah, this is the best one yet. Totally not fertile. Okay, totally. You see that? Then I take a fertile egg here. It's totally darkened. Look at that. You can see the air sac down below. And the baby chick is inside there. See how dark it is? You can't even see through it. So there you go. One more time. Not fertile. Definitely not fertile. I'm going to double check this in the closet. Definitely not fertile. Definitely not fertile. Oh, definitely. Look at that. Definitely not fertile. This one looks a little bit dark. I'm going to go to the back utility room where it's totally black back there and just double check that one. Oh, look at that. You can see right through that one. And I got to hurry up because I want to get them back into the heat and to finish this process. That's not fertile. Not fertile. Definitely not fertile. I'll double check this one also. So I've got three that I'm going to double check. So out of 52, because I recounted after, after uh, with 52 eggs originally in the incubator, uh, I only have 37 that showed, which appeared to me and you saw some of how I was doing that, uh, to have life in it, potential hatching. So 37 eggs are right now um, in the incubator. And today's the 28th of January, 29th. So I'm thinking January 30th, uh, 31, uh, just before February, that we should be hatching baby Egyptian quail, jumbo quail, okay? So, fingers crossed, and uh, we'll see what, what happens. The grandkids are going to love this. They're going to love this. And so, once again, you can see all of these eggs right here uh, have absolutely, I double checked. I took them back to our back utility room, and uh, they have no life in them. Uh, they're, they're clear. Some of the eggs were actually dark, so dark outside it was hard to tell. But I look closely and there's definitely no life in them. I redid the humidity to 75%. Everybody has different, they say 60%, some say only 70. I just, I just, uh, I'll go with the original scenario, what I was told well over a year ago, that uh, 45 degrees for the first 15 days and then up to 75 for lockdown, or after lockdown. So I'm going to discard these eggs. We got 37 eggs in here. In a couple of days, we hope to see some incredible uh, life take place. So, so then everyone, thank you very much here at the Sparks Family Homestead. And uh, there's a ton of st other things that are going on here besides the quail. Uh, and I also have to order some more hatching time cages. So I will be doing that. It all depends on the hatching. 
and uh, we'll just see how it all pans out okay hopefully we have a good hatch rate because the hatch rate is based on the fertile eggs not not the 52 eggs that originally uh, that I received or, or uh, had available okay so 37 in the incubator to hatch let's see with what happens take care and god bless okay and if you have not subscribed please do there's going to be a lot of things going on here and uh, yeah i have been silent for the last month or two uh just so many other things with family and things were going on and then winter came and it's all muddy and yucky outside but Things are happening, and the garden is going to be incredible this year. The grape, the vineyards, um, and just so much more. Hope, hope to see you. So we'll be back here with the final result, okay? Take care and God bless.